to do this. Do you know what else I love? I love the law of the conservation of energy. And today, I was trying to figure out a way to connect these two beautiful physics concepts. And I stumbled upon something magical that allowed us to do this. It's a little something called roller coasters. Yes, you may think of it as a joke, but I'm going to teach you this in three different ways. As you can see, it's a board behind me. Uh, uh, it says the contents. Number one, I'm going to teach you conceptually, as I assume it says there. Number two, I go to teach you mathematically. And number three, I go to teach you algorithmically, or using uh, specifically using coding with the computer language C++. If you don't know what it is, you should probably know what is C first. <clears throat> Anyways, it's irrelevant until the third content. So let's start with the conceptual things. So uh, as you can see, there are five questions behind me. And let's go to the first one. Uh, as you can see here, what uh, is a roller coaster? It may seem obvious at first, but uh, uh, perhaps you've never looked at it this way before. A roller coaster is a machine that uses gravity, inertia, and centripetal acceleration. <coughs> To send the rider certain sensations if the machine moves up, down, and around the uh, uh, curving and the uh, uh, track road with slopes. <sighs> it's an engineering phenomenon because it allows us to make a connection between F equal to MA and <clears throat> it allows us to make a connection between F equal MA and the law of the conservation of energy. In fact, later in the second content, I assume it says there, uh, <coughs> mathematics, I will show you how F equal MA, the roller coaster, allows us to make a connection between F equal to MA and uh, the concept of potential and kinetic energy. Now let's move. Now, there are three red equations uh, uh, here beside me. And let's uh, read these three red equations with me. Uh, number one, the triple acceleration is equal to v and velocity squared over radius. <clears throat> number two, uh, the velocity has to be greater than or equal to the square root of dr. Uh, otherwise, you'd either stop at the bottom uh, or you'd fall at the top, which nobody wants. Uh, and the radius, the radius had to be greater than or equal to the uh, two times the height. The height of the slope before it is shown in this diagram, divided by five. Uh, otherwise, the same thing would happen. Your potential, uh, the, the kinetic energy would decrease and you would fall from the top or stop at the bottom. And now, uh, let's move to the second question, the pink question. As you can see here, how does a roller coaster work? Now, this also may seem obvious, but here's this. A roller coaster uh, starts by going up an enormous hill. But the engineers do this because they want the roller coaster to build up potential energy. <clears throat> so in this diagram here, there's a hill. all that 
potential energy and converts it to kinetic energy. Just can't help it. I have a cold. Help me. <coughs> it goes uh, uh, down the hill and all to the loop. It's shown in that diagram. <coughs> but in order for a safe trip, a perfectly safe trip around the loop, two things are required. And they are both in the equations here. Number one, v squared has to be greater than or equal to the square root of g r. Or, as I mentioned before, you'd either stop at the bottom or fall from the top. And number two, the, the radius has to be greater than or equal to two times the height of the slope of four, as is shown here, divided by five. Otherwise, the same thing would happen. You uh, wouldn't uh, be uh, build up enough uh, potential energy to later convert it to kinetic energy and then velocity. Uh, now, let's move on to the third question, the balloon question. What are the effects of gravity on a roller coaster? Now, before we talk about gravity, gravity let's talk about inertial reference frames. So, what is an inertial reference frame, you may ask? Well, an inertial reference frame is a reference frame where a one single object floats around in a void, and there are no other objects around it. Scientists imagine this to use as a force field, but that's irrelevant. That is very irrelevant. Let's actually go to the relevant part now. A roller coaster, right? So this roller coaster is our single object in the in the inertial reference frame, right? So if I drop the roller coaster from height h, would it fall? No, since uh, there is no second mass around it, which means no forces, which also means no gravity. So it would not fall. But we are on Earth, not in a void of nothingness. So this idea of inertial reference frame breaks down. Now you might be thinking, what are we going to do? We have no more ideas left. Or do we? We can always switch to Galileo's flat Earth approximation hypothesis, which states that one F equal to negative mg, and yeah, and two that the Earth is flat, even though he knew it was really round. And oh no, I have no markers. I'm out of stock. Oh, there it is. Technical difficulties, please. And so I go to not block when I write. So. Uh, equals to negative mg. Now let's write the Newtonian hypothesis. F equal to ma, as many of you may know it. Or, but, you just wrote it using differentials. Well, let's use that instead, because I absolutely adore this person. Which is Isaac Newton, a, a Pixar star Isaac Newton from the uh, Encyclopedia Britannica if, uh, Britannica, if you couldn't tell. But anyways, let's set these equal to each other. Make up mg is equal to m d squared x over dt squared. Now, we can cancel out m for both sides. So negative g is equal to d uh, e squared x over dt squared. Now, it would be easier to switch from differentials to regular variables, so I go to do that. So, negative g equals a. This tells us that a is never dependent on mass. Uh, now, let's move on to the fourth question. Greed. Ooh. What could the answer to this one be? What are the effects of normal force on a roller coaster? So, the effect of normal force on a roller coaster. 
coaster. By the way, let's put this back in my pocket because we don't need it until the second content. So, the effects of normal force on a roller coaster are, let's say I jump up. First of all, what do I feel? I feel weightless because the normal force is zero. The normal force is a contact force and we feel our weight based on normal force. So if normal force is set to zero, we feel weightless. And second of all, what, do, what uh, else do I feel? I feel my stomach bulging out my belly. You, that makes, so that makes jumping a lot darker. You don't want to be a cheerleader, do you? <laughs> Now, uh, uh, the same thing happens on a roller coaster when it's upside down. It kind of loses contact with the rail, resulting in a feeling of weightlessness in the passengers. And so, uh, the uh, uh, wheels aren't like this, but rather like this. They're losing contact. Uh, now, uh, uh, so, it feels it creates a feeling of weightlessness. Without normal force, the roller coasters wouldn't be as thrilling. Or as exciting, or as jubilant. I could do so many synonyms of ha uh, uh, happy to describe it. And now, number five, the final question, the colossal question, the purple question. How can you relate the law of the conservation of energy to the roller coasters. How can you relate the law of the conservation of energy to the roller coasters? <clears throat> okay, so uh, we'll, uh, this will be later shown in the mathematical part. But uh, the, the law of the conservation of energy proves that here is shown the radius is a function of the height of the slope. The radius uh, of this the slope is a, a function of the height of the slope. Now, that's all we want to do. Mathematics! Now let's draw the center of this beautiful circle. I'll just fix that. Now, this is height r for a radius of the loop. Now if this is r, what is this height? This is 2r. Uh, and let's call this height h, in which r is a function of h, and r is 2h over 5. But how are we going to prove that? We're going to prove that later. And now, let's start our fourth body diagram right from right to left. So, let's draw a giant tea table. Nobody wants to have tea table here. Uh, nobody wants to have tea here, of course, because there'll be uh, some words in on here. So, top, let's write top here, these are the only two points that matter, the top and the bottom. So the top, let's make a hypothesis about the top, because you never know, your predictions can be right. Let's make an educated guess. Based on what I did on the elevator before, I think lighter. Because, yeah, you never know. You can make an educated guess. Bottom? My hypothesis is that you're heavier. Based on the results from my elevator physics thing. So the top, the hypothesis is lighter. Let's draw boxes to represent the roller coaster cars. We don't represent silly wheels here. You're getting closer to art than you are getting to physics here. Anyway, that's irrelevant, as I said before. So, F, uh, 
So this is F M and this is F G. Uh, uh, so F M is pushing you down in the direction you want to sit in the uh, seat. Uh, so obviously you don't break the rule because they have to implement that new rule first. Now you want to sit down here, but the roller coaster is pushing you up. And here you want to hear the push is up, but the normal force is trying to push you down. But the force of gravity always pushes you down. So now, let's put F equal MA, or, or the famous equation, in both of these heads. Areas of the tea table. Ooh. Nobody wants to, likes to have tea with the words on their bottoms. So Fn minus Fn minus Fd equals negative MAC. Because both of these forces are pulling down, uh, which uh, we assume is negative. Because, yeah, sum is negative here. Now, let's uh, put this equation. Fn minus Fd equals to Mac. Because it's how you want, you want to accelerate up here. So, here let's multiply everything by negative 1. Then we can make everything positive. Now, Let's uh, look at this. Let's send. Uh, uh, let's add FD to both sides. You would uh, cancel these, and you would get FAC plus FD. Uh, and here, uh, you would get FN plus FD has to be MD equals to MAC is mv squared over r since greatest oh yeah yeah which is with because centripetal acceleration is v squared over r so now let's look at here and that's that mv squared over r plus mg so this is our equation for the bottom and let's find out if the top is lighter or heavier. So the top from Fn, let's subtract Mg from both sides and we get Fn is Mv squared over R minus Mg. Which means that this is this plus 2 Mg equals this. Which means our hypo our hypothesis was correct. Now, which I go to represent using a hypothesis sign in the check mark. Hooray! Hooray! Now, let's look at finding the safe minimum velocity. Let's find the safe. Minimum velocity. Now, as you might recall from the equation before in the first content, uh, the minimum velocity had to be the square root of the r. But you still don't know how to do that, right? So it's always good to see how to do that, not just the answer. That's how they do it in my school. But that in my school, PS7, that's irrelevant. What is relevant is her finding the same velocity. So, uh, the same velocity that you don't fall from the top. But, uh, so you fall from the top or the bottom, as I said, the top. Because you can't fall from the bottom, there's no way, right? So, the top. So, let's use the equation for the top. No good. So, Fn has to 
to go to zero. It had to be zero or greater. Otherwise, ah, no. So, let's set f n to zero in our equation. Zero equals m v squared over r minus m z. m v squared, so if you would add m z to both sides, we would get m g equals to m v squared over r. Now let's cross multiply, which means we multiply this by this and multiply this by this. This actually works. Trust me, you can try on uh, this problem later. No, we're not doing that because it's irrelevant. So, mgr equals mv squared. Uh, now, let's divide both sides by m. We would get v squared is gr. Now, if we square root both sides, we would get v is the square root of gr, which means, which is the proof for this, uh, the equation, v is greater than or equal to the square root of gr. Otherwise, that. The Grim Reaper is coming. Uh, now, let's find the safe, let's also separate the diagram from here. Oh yeah, there's too narrow space here. I don't think we'll be able to solve for the radius in here. Okay, so find the minimum safe radius. Or R. Now here is where these heights come in. Whoa, I think I have a glass stroke on my pants. Well, it's nothing to worry about. <laughs> so, the mechanical energy, which is the total energy, another way of saying the total energy, ooh, before, it had to be equal to the mechanical energy after. Because of the law of conservation of energy, and that, and that means energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred from one place to another. So, so that means that the universe, the total energy in the universe, will be the same energy for billions of years. Which means the total energy in this roller coaster will be the same. So, mechanical energy before and mechanical energy after. So, perpetual. Gravitational potential energy before, plus kinetic energy before, plus uh, potential energy uh, 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 spring before is equal to gravitational potential energy after, plus kinetic energy after, plus uh, spring potential energy after. Now, uh, do you think there's any springs behind the scenes in a roller coaster? No, of course not. Unless you're riding on a dangerous, fancy roller coaster. So, these are set to zero. Uh, now, before the uh, roller coaster with me in it, uh, uh, is still on the top. It's just waiting to convert all that potential energy to kinetic energy. But it hasn't. So K is set to zero. So that leaves us with MGH is equal to two MGR, since the height is two R in that case, plus half MV squared A. And let me leave you with uh, 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 two notes. GPE equal MGH and k equal half of v squared. These are the two equations you need. You also have ps equals half kx squared, but as we mentioned, there are no springs behind the scene, 
and that's a riding on a BMT roller coaster. So, uh, you don't need that right now. So, uh, we can uh, cancel, we can divide this whole equation by n. That then leaves us with GH equals 2GR plus half V squared N. And this is the minimum. So that means that we have to put this to the square root of the GR squared. Which if you can't to lead down, you get G8 equals 2GR plus GR over 2. Now we can factor out GR from everything. Hooray! G, G, G. Now you get H equals 2R plus R over 2. Which leaves us with H equals 5R over 2. The radius would of course, would of course be the inverse of this, being 2H over 5. And that's how you prove the minimum radius. R had to be greater than or equal to 2H over 5. And now, let's move on to the final content, the code. And no, this is not robot code. That's for the future. This is C++ code. This is not what you see on the internet when you play games and yeah, do all that stuff that we don't do here. That's who HTML. We're using C++. And now let's get to the coding. Okay, I teleported here in a quadrillionth of a quadrillionth of a second. But anyways, we're going to convert all this into C++ code. And we're going to, yes, we're going to convert these two both in one single program. So let's start. Just kidding, that's not how real, uh, that's not how real C++ code looks like. It's not gibberish. So don't try doing this on your computer. It'll break. So, hashtag include iostream. You should all know why you need this. Now, hashtag include cmap. And do you know why? So, the, the computer knows what it's doing when we put an enter in square root using namespace std int main. Calm down, C++, it's just incomplete. Stop showing red things. And by the way, if you see red things under your uh, code, that means there's something wrong with it. So, let's put uh, enter in the string input. This is going to be useful for later. Because this is for an if statement to, uh, to, uh, to like, yeah. This is what happens when you select something. A certain input happens. Uh, so, string input. A certain output happens if you put a certain in input. So, count, which is uh, the typical word for printing. What do you want? Now we have to put backward slash n to change line. Number one, the radius. Number two, The velocity and L. Now let's see what this prints. Because 
Cody did all about, okay, let's not do it because it'll probably waste time and it's going to take me long enough to open the output tab. But this is going to change lives, remember that. And the backward slash is here on your keyboard. It may be hard to memorize, but just memorize. So, if, this is why we need to put string. Input equals equals, if we just put one, which is uh, for the radius, that's going to be wrong. We have to put it in a, that's going to be a string. It's going to be wrong. It, it has to be in quotation marks so it knows it's the user doing it, not the computer. If input equals one, put curly braces to show what the input should be, output should be. Count, I need double eight for equals zero for height. And we want the radius. So radius is two eight over five and it says there. We're going to leave double is for labeling it a number with an infinite amount of decimals. So count what is the height of the the we're referencing this slope. That slope on the diagram. Sin eight. If you like to the line, it has to be low on this line here. So uh, <coughs> the radius, double radius, because we need to label it. Radius for R has to be equal to two multiplied by eight divided by five. So count the radius Oh, wow. The radius must be space R or let's start the, let's start like getting farther out uh, or greater. And slash, no, no, slash n, date for using this program. And slash created. No, no, this is the wrong way. Slash n created by Suborno Barry. Enter your name. If that's my name, Suborno Barry, as I announced in the first content. You enter your name. Don't write created by Suborno Barry. That's taking credit. <sighs> I mean, I'm taking the credit. So, but we there's a second input, so we have to put this outside here, and we have to put else. Uh, that, that means if something else happens, else that uh, this is what happens for multiple faces. Else, if input. Is has to be two. Uh, put the quotation mark. It's not a string. 
with that, we're starting to run out of space here. But lucky me, I have this. So else, we only need to focus on this part right now. That means that it wants the velocity, which is referenced by the equation. the square root of dr. So double z. So we're not setting z to zero because it's on earth. So z has to be 9.81. This is what you have to write for things you know are constant. So double r equals zero because you don't know the radius set. The radius could be uh, 5, the radius could be 10, the radius could be 100, the radius could be 1,000. Wow, that's intimidating. So, count what is the radius of the loop. And L. Sin R. So, uh, uh, you, wait, I feel like something is wrong here. So, sin R. So, I felt like something was improper right there. So, hmm, the velocity, or double, since we didn't label it, it's like labels on a box. Double V equals to a square root, square root of this. Uh, the square root of, let's say, wait, G times... R. Whoa! Come in, Z. Now, this doesn't show a red line under it. Now, let's see what happens if I delete C map. It has a red line under it. Since it doesn't know what, to, what on Earth square root means if you don't put C map. So, count. The velocity, thank you, must be, oh right, put a space, V, or greater. Let's copy what I wrote, because it'll be easier. Command C, Command V. Must be weird. So, this should be the end of the shoot. 25 line program. Let's see the whole program. Oh goodness. It's large. But this, this is the whole program. The whole program. It's going to take me a while. Oh, there we go. Finally, I put drag the output tab correctly. What do I want? The radius or the velocity? Let's see. What? Let's see the radius. What the? Well, let's see. Let's go see what went wrong. It'll just stay calm. Stay calm. Doesn't it look 
like there's anything wrong here. I didn't put the, uh, I didn't ask the computer to uh, remember the input. Ooh. Well, that's what caused all the things to go wrong. So, let's start with what? The radius. The height of the slope. Let's say it's 30. The radius must be 12 or greater. That's correct. Since 30 times 2 here is 60, 60 divided by 5 is 12. Now, for the square root one, we need a calculator. Because you can't do that in your head, surely. So let's go to the velocity. The radius of the loop, let's say 20. 25. 15.6605 or greater. Let's check that using our TI30XIIF. So, a D, which is 9.81, times the radius, which is 25, is 245.25. If I square root my answer, I get 15.660459.976. Yeah, the computer, cut the computer some slack. It just estimated, okay? It didn't want to uh, crash because this is probably a rascal. But anyway, that's irrelevant. <coughs> the same way again, I bet. Roller coasters are a physics lesson waiting to be failed. That's what you learned from today's lesson. Bye!